Okay, so for this base, <clears throat> there's a few things that you could do. Um, this is just stack slices, right? So you might, you most likely already have a contour map for this. So you can just use that to create uh, uh, um, the actual topo base model. Um, if you don't have that and you worked more just in Rhino to create it, you can also uh, create contours in Rhinoceros. So if I went ahead and selected this, and I'm going to go into the Curve from uh, Objects tool, so Curve, and all the way at the bottom there's Curve from Objects. And there's a variety of ways I can get curves from various objects. Um, all of these. One of them that I'm going to use right now is Contour. Okay, so here's this object, uh, Contour Base Plane Point. Uh, make sure I got my object snap on this point right here. Now it's asking me for the direction perpendicular to the contour planes, so the stacks, perpendicular to the stacks. So I'm going to go straight up because I want them to stack horizontally. The distance between, now this is more <coughs> relative to the scale of material that you're going to be using, right? One foot at an eighth inch uh, 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 scale is an eighth of an inch, and so you have to make sure you have that kind of material, which is probably more like a cardboard. Um, something along those lines or a couple layers of chipboard. So you can change that. If you wanted, if you had a thicker material, I can change the contours to be two feet if I wanted. But I'm going to, and I would just type that in right here. But I'm going to leave it as one foot for now and then I'll right click. Then it just generated all of those contours. And what I'm then able to do, I'm going to move those and it should have divided it up and automatically grouped by each slice right so <clears throat> I could start from the top or the bottom what have you and just start moving these over and arranging them to be cut um, I'd want to do that <clears throat> do that first so move all of these so you can first of all keep track of them move them so um, they'll be by themselves and not overlapping each other but then the other thing is these, these are still have a <clears throat> Z uh, distance meaning they're up in the air. I'm not going to do these for all these. So basically you would separate all of those out, arrange them however you'd like them to be arranged. And then what I'm able to do, I'm just going to make that selection <coughs> so we can see they're, they're up in the air. <coughs> I can go into transform So this is basically where your copy is, mirror, array, those types of things that are common to CAD programs. There's also one called project, project to construction plane. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm in the right view for this, which would be the top. I want it to, pro it to project down to that base. If you're on a side view, it'll project it laterally. We don't want that. Delete input so I can get rid of the input so they're not up in the air. I'm going to say yes to that. The default is no. So you would have two sets. And now they're down on the ground. Um, so then from this I could go into, well, you can print them out to scale is one option. Um, if you wanted to bring them into AutoCAD, you can go into Export Selected which is the same command that we'll use to go to create a STL file, but I don't want to do that with this. I just want to go straight to maybe DWG or Illustrator or, or any other program that you want to use. Um, so DWG, you can bring it into Illustrator, what have you. So that way you could set it up for the laser cutter if you wanted to do that. 
um, or you could just print it out. Again, you may already have these drawn, so you don't necessarily have to go through this process, but you do have to make sure you create an opening. See, automatically the area where the second layer will be inserted is already built into these contours, so we don't have to worry about that with this. Um, but, you know, depending on how you're working or your workflow for this, you may already just have these drawn, you may just make that cut, make, you know, understand where it is and um, factor that into the way you're creating the, um, the contour base. You could just create uh, <coughs> print it out and make a template. You'd have to print out a lot of these a lot of sheets to do that. So eleven by seventeen. Um, so this is just a printer dialog box. Say I wanted to print to this printer, even though my wireless isn't working. It is 208. I want to make sure it's a vector output, so it's just the lines. Black and white is good. Top, yes. It's already selected to one eighth scale, one eighth inch scale. I could select another scale. But it's relative to the viewport, so it's a little bit off. That's not going to necessarily work. So it's a little, you know, you have to play around with the printer settings to get that to line up and for that to work in order to get it out. But you could do it that way. It's a little bit too big for 11 by 17, actually. So you probably have to do it in pieces. Okay. Does that make sense for some options for that, for the base? Okay. So this is the piece that I wanted to bring into 123D Make. So again, I'll go back into File, Export Selected. Get to my right folder. going to throw it on my desktop. And I'm going to call it, maybe give it a date, uh, topo small one. Then I want to make sure the file type is STL. And save it. And I say OK for the default there. This will not stop popping up. So there's that STL file. One, two, three D make. I'll just launch it. Then I'm going to go to the import here. Navigate to the file I just created. STL open and there there it is again I want to make sure it's to the right scale so if I still had this open in Rhino I could get that distance And do the math to get it to the right inch. So that's 97 feet. And it is 7 divided by 8. And then it would be 5 point. Or 
was that? 5.85, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. 0.4875, so it's 97.4875. 94.875. Seven. So now all of that, that's basically the, I just converted everything to feet. Now I'll divide it by eight, because it's eight feet per inch. 12.185, 12.186 would probably be good enough. 12.186. <clears throat> so I'll go back here to length. 12. Point, what was it? 186? It's going to keep it uniform, so I just scaled it. Now it's at eighth inch scale. Um, <clears throat> you want to make sure to have the right material selected. If you still need to add that material, um, again, you can go to this pencil tool that's going to let you, with this plus symbol, add a custom uh, material. So you can adjust the um, width and length. 3218, that's to fit on the laser cutter bed. Um, I have it at 16th inch of a scale thickness. Um, that's for the notching, so it understands how it's going to notch. The margins are a quarter inch, which was what Jay prefers. And I'm just gonna leave these, the offset, slot offset, and the tool diameter um, as the defaults. So, what did I just do? And then you can rename it if you'd like. Just double click on it and rename it. But I'm going to delete it because I already have one. Then the next thing would be to select technique. Could be stacked slices. Could be the interlocked. It could be, I don't know what curve is. Hmm. Interlock curve. That could be an option. Radial slices. Or I don't know if I keep curves or interlocked, interlocked. If you wanted to experiment with some of those others, I mean, the interlocked is one of the more straightforward. I don't want it to be just the stacked, um, one way or the other, because you could just do that manually. So that first section of uh, booming split, you want that in layers? That's just regular layers, yeah, just okay. like the ones you've already created. And then the second section that you do booming split, you cast what you want in the... Uh, uh, Through 1, 2, 3D make, right. Okay. Um, cardboard is fine as long as it's neat. Okay, and you want brown side up? Brown side up. Um, yeah. You could use chipboard, but it'll take a lot of layers to do chipboard. So cardboard is, is, is fine. The, um, well, the bookstore should have cardboard. You also can get giant sheets of cardboard at UPS. Big, big flat ones. What's that? He started to let us do that. Yeah, well, we did it last last semester, so he's opening up to that as an option. He's still probably worried a little bit about it, but we started doing it last last semester in a seminar. Yes. Yes. The, the whole thing. So the 144 foot, um, I had that one printout that was tiled together. I don't know if it's still somewhere, but the base will end up being 
something like that, square, and then your insert will be within that. Um, so I, gone, I went through some of this before, slice direction, modify the form. The other thing you see that you can, that you can do is make these individual selections. So I could select, actually select a slice, hey, when it zooms out, and uh, move it around. So you can also just do that manually. So you can make some adjustments however you think is what's going to make sense. Because it's just going to give you a straightforward grid no matter what. So you could go in there and tweak it if you want. You don't have to do that, but I wanted you to know that that's, that's uh, a possibility. Um, then it was get plans. You want to make sure it's nested to use as few sheets as possible. Then you could export that as a DXF and bring that into AutoCAD, follow those steps as part of the previous. The other thing that's um, definitely handy is the assembly steps. Some of these controls fall off of the screen here, but then you can go step by step, piece by piece. It should tell you in the lower right hand corner what piece you should, can use for each of those steps so you can see how to assemble it. <coughs> in theory, probably with some encouragement. All right, guys?